with your position change that you had uh, two years ago, when did you start to feel like you were comfortable and, and could start to really make plays? Yeah, so I'd say around the beginning slash middle of spring ball, I started to kind of click with the position and it started to you know make sense to me and and uh, my assignments and what I was doing and just all the little things and the details and the techniques that go with that uh, just really started to click with me, especially with you know being around Boye, who has experience in that position, being able to work with him for a whole season through that COVID year and then into uh, spring ball and you know further into towards the end of that. Just it really just started to click and you know fall camp just really you know for me it was a reaffirming that I knew what I was doing and I can just go play and not have to worry about too much. What is that transition like with, with your hand down versus standing up? Yeah, uh, it, it's a little different. I'd say uh, the position I play, it's not, to me, it's not too much of an extreme because there are some things I'm doing that I have kind of done before. Um, you know, there are a lot of things that are different in terms of the technique that goes with that. And, you know, obviously that's where the, having that year, year and a half uh, of, of just learning it and practicing it and getting used to it really makes a big difference in terms of am I going to go do this with confidence or, or am I still thinking about what's going on. So just uh, taking the time to you know, learn that, just, that's just a transition. What, what did having success then mean after all that work you did for the transition? It, it mean, means a lot. And it's just, it's just another one of those steps that, you know, we talk about taking in the process that we have as a, you know, as a team in our culture. As, you know, we're, we're always we're always working. You're always getting better. So it, it's really that step by step. You know, climbing the mountain. You know, the line of success we describe. You're up and down. You can never let the highs get too high, and you can never let the lows get too low. And you know, I'm you know grateful to be where I'm at today. But that's just another part of the step. And I'm here because of my teammates and the coaches around me. What was the process that brought you to Minnesota? Um, you know, really, I think that was just a part of you know, me finding the right coach uh, that I wanted to be with, uh, the right culture. And I think at the time as, you know, a 17 year old kid that's going through that process, I don't necessarily know that those are the things that I want in my head, but I'm thinking about it in that certain way where these are the things that I want and, you know, to be able to get here and to be with coach Fleck and to have him you know, take me along this journey and, and teach me and tell me about these things, you know, those things start to click together. So to me, it becomes a, oh, yeah, that makes sense now because when I was getting recruited, you know, that was something I was looking for in terms of Coach Fleck and how he is as a person and as a coach um, and, and what he teaches. Talk about the, the line of success. What, is that, what does that look like? How has that been kind of presented? Uh, so we define the line of success as the part of the process. And that's just in terms of, of your journey throughout that process. And you'll always uh, be fluctuating. You'll never be in the same spot. You'll always you'll be going up. You'll have great times. You'll be going down, have bad times. Um, it, it's, it never stays the same. And that's one of those things where you can never let it uh, affect you in a certain way. Again, like I was saying, the highs can never be too high and the lows can never be too low. So we just, you know, that's something that we have as a part of our culture in terms of this is how we approach things. And over time, you know, you continually get higher on the line of success, but you realize that, you know, there's always work to be done. What do you think has been key for the defense in the last two weeks? Really, I think the key that we've uh, started to take together as a defense as a whole is just being connected. And Boy was just talking about it, you know, the units in between the guys on the D line and the linebackers and the DBs and just everyone together, knowing that, you know, in order to be a successful defense, we have to work together. And that, you know, there's 11 guys on the field. And if you have 10 guys doing their job and one guy's not doing their job, then you're not going to be successful. And that's just how it is. And these past two weeks, I think, as a defense, we're starting to understand that, you know, doing your job is what your role is in order to be successful as a defense and your part on the defense is important. You know, no, no guy's job is more important than the other guy's job. So I think that that has just started to be something that really clicks with us. Well, you assured that you guys got together for a meeting this morning. Walk me through kind of what was said and, and what kind of the message was there. Yeah, so we just kind of had a pretty heart to heart conversation and it was just, you know, we know who we are and we know that we can be. 
you know, we got four games of, of data that we can take from and learn from. And we're going into Big Ten play now. And, that, you know, that's just where we are. And we learn from those, those uh, four points of data, those four games. And we just continue to go through our process. And, you know, we just wanted to make sure guys know that, you know, you can't be too low now. This is one of the points you got to understand, like, we're going through the season. You just got to keep continuing to row the boat and go through the process. When was the last time you guys had one of those player meetings? Uh, I'm not sure. We, we, I mean, we try to, to get together at, as, you know, just a team and maybe not even as a team, but as groups as, or, you know, units, just have conversations. I wouldn't say there is any conversation about being in this, a particular situation that we're in, but just having, you know, a meeting to talk about whatever needs to be talked about. What stands out about Purdue when you see them on tape? Uh, they're a great team, you know, good quarterback. I uh, like to, you know, spread you out and do a lot of things. But, you know, again, they're a good team. So we just got to make sure that uh, we trust the coaches and what they're what they're given to us and we execute our job and do our assignments and you know, go out there and accomplish what we want to accomplish. What does it mean to you to have Boye celebrating with you in Colorado after your sacks? It, it was awesome. He, 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 Boye is a phenomenal, phenomenal teammate, phenomenal friend, um, re really great person. Uh, to be around and he, he and I just throughout the past year and a half together as we've gone through this journey have just really had a great relationship I um, mean he, he again he's a great guy and just to have him and be 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 able to enjoy uh, these moments with him I mean it, it's awesome I, it's hard to describe but just glad to have him as my teammate and wouldn't want you know wouldn't want to be anywhere else since the time that uh, practice started, uh, Thomas, um, have you heard the guys talk much about NIL? And if so, what have they said? And what do you think about it? I, I honestly haven't really talked to much, many or a lot of the guys about NIL. Uh, there hasn't really been too much said about it. I think more back around when it first got announced, there was just kind of talks about what it's going to be like and what all that pertains. But there hasn't really been a big focus or, or talk about NIL and how that affects us, I guess, as a team, as more so maybe as an individual. But it, it really hasn't been what we are focusing on or maybe I'd say distracted by. But, uh, I mean, NIL for me, I think, you know, it's a great opportunity for guys that want to do it. And if you have the opportunity, then great. But I don't want that to take away from, you know, my ability to – do my job or be a, be a teammate and, you know, execute the responsibilities that I have. Would that have factored into your decision in, in choosing a school when you were, if you, if you put yourself back in high school and NIL was present? I'm not sure. Uh, I haven't really thought about it too much myself. Um, again, I, I've looked at it. I've, you know, dipped my toe in the water a little bit back in the summer, but uh, again, I just... It's hard for me to say, especially right now when I'm so focused on, you know, what's the next step in terms of who we're playing, what's going on, and, you know, everything I have to do to be successful on Saturday against, you know, whoever our opponent is. I, I mean, it's just hard to say if, if that would be a big factor in where I would go personally. I can't say that for everyone else, but that would be my opinion. Are there any more questions for Thomas? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Yes.